Few people who are familiar with India's financial capital, Mumbai, realize just how rich the city's history is beyond the more famous, that is the three UNESCO World Heritage Sites that the city boasts of, all of which are in the southern part of the city. But outside this, there are a host of sites which are much more ancient. Off the beaten track for most tourists who come to Mumbai, some of these sites are in a dire state. In our new series of ground reports on the state of our heritage in our cities, we travel to one of Mumbai's most significant monuments. It is tucked in the middle of dense habitation and is struggling to survive. Caught in a web of apathy, greed, ignorance and callous disregard, Western India's oldest rock-cut Shaivite cave temple, going back to the 6th century CE, the Jogeshwari Caves, is struggling to stand. This cave complex was built in the 6th century by a Kalachuri king from present-day Madhya Pradesh who had extended his kingdom here. He was a Pashupat, a follower of the Shaivite cult. While the tradition of excavating the volcanic basalt rocks of the region into temples go back to the 2nd century BCE with a string of Buddhist caves that have been built over hundreds of years, this was the first Hindu Shaivite cave to be excavated. These caves hold another interesting tale. It is said that it is here, perhaps sitting on this platform, that the details of the 15th century text, the Mahikavati Chabhakkar, was originally composed. The story goes that in 1448, the goddess of this temple, Jogeshwari, appeared in the dream of the Desai or administrator of Malad, which is close by, Naiko Rao, and asked him to chronicle the story of the region and the communities that lived here. Naiko Rao then invited around 3,655 people from different parts of the area to come to the Jogeshwari temple where the story was taken down by a scholar Keshav Charya and the Mahikavati Chabhakkar was written. It of course was added to over the next few centuries. At its core, this ballad tells the story of King Bimba who is said to have come to this area from Patan in Gujarat. This is an important text to understand the history of Mumbai and the region around it. But the story of Jogeshwari, where the chronicles started to be put together, is of course much older. The renowned historian Walter Spink, who did seminal work on the cave temples of Ajanta and the Deccan, called Jogeshwari India's first great Hindu cave temple. It was a precursor to the much more famous Elephanta caves that were built a century after. But despite its historic significance, the Jogeshwari Caves are one of Mumbai's most fragile archaeological sites. Decades of neglect have caused immense damage and the pressures of dense habitation have added to its woes, taking a serious toll. A look at the satellite image of the site will show you just how bad the situation is. This is surprising because the site has been under the ASI or the Archaeological Survey of India for over 100 years. In 1909, the British government had notified Jogeshwari as a historic site under the protection of the Archaeological Survey of India. It was later incorporated in the central list of the ASI managed from New Delhi as a monument of national significance. But the ASI cover has hardly lent any protection to the site of Jogeshwari. For instance, despite clear rules that govern protected ASI sites, houses have been built within a 100 meter radius of the cave. Forget the larger buffer zone of 200 meters around it that must be maintained as per regulation. Construction work here seems to have gone on right under the nose of the ASI over the last few decades. 
Finally, in 2004, a citizen-led group, the Jan Hit Manch, filed a case in the Bombay High Court demanding that the government intervene and protect the site. Rajan Jekar, the convener of INTAC, applied on behalf of his organization. The Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage has been closely involved as a campaigner for heritage and its restoration across the country. Jekar also has a personal connection with the Jogeshwari Temple. His family is from the old Pathare Prabhu community that is said to have come with King Bimba of the Mahikavati Chabhakkar fame from Patan. They have been praying at Jogeshri for hundreds of years. I remember as early as middle of 1950s when we used to take hire a taxi and we were staying at near Pratna Samaj opposite Harkisandas Hospital and the whole jingbang used to fit into an old DeSoto taxi and we used to go there. It was almost like a jungle. There was a lot of vegetation in front of the caves, above it, on the sides and uh, we used to park the vehicle, we used to go inside. It's a cave, of course, carved like elephanta out of stone. And it has got a big opening inside where there are a row of pillars, again, almost like elephanta. In fact, as I read more, uh, Jogeshwari cave is like an experimental cave for elephanta because Jogeshwari cave is supposed to be 6th century and elephanta cave is a century later. So the, if you see the axis and everything, it almost matches with what is there in Elephanta. So there are a row of pillars all around and in the middle is the shrine. Whenever we are visited for that festival, I have always noticed that there was a, a face mask and the Jogeshwari Devi used to be decked up properly in sari, etc. And I always believed that there must be an idol over which all this has been put. But one year I happened to see it before we went a little before time and we found that the dressing up etc was about to start there are stone footprints actually and there is no idol and those stone footprints we are told are swayambu that means they are not created by man they are there from all times to come so this is how the jogeshwari looked in the uh, in the middle of the 50s every year i have been going there without fail every year except for the last two years we could not go but I have seen the place getting changed, I wouldn't say for the good but for the bad because the vegetation started going down, some hutmen, some living, some uh, people started living around and a time came when if you go today, it is full of unauthorized construction all over. Now I remember as a child after we visited the cave and did our puja etc, when we came out, on the right hand side there was a small a stream of water and there was a small bridge also where you could go on the other side and there used to be a sadhu sitting there with a leopard for a pet like a dog sitting next to him of course with an harness and we are and our parent used to say please don't go near don't disturb them and we used to just see that that leopard used to just sit quiet and do nothing so all of course with the development of the area the leopard disappeared the greenery disappeared it is hard to believe that this would have been a thickly forested area even till about 50 years ago. But like much else across the city, this too exploded with people coming in in droves in the 70s and 80s. Over time, things got to such a state that there was a full settlement of houses on top of the cave, putting at risk the entire structure. Since 2002, people from here have been moved out. Not only they were hutments and, and encroachments above the cave itself, but because of the water and it, not only water, but sewage, etc., it started dripping into the cave. So that was a damaging factor for the cave itself. So Janait Manch ultimately filed a petition way back in 2004. And all they were asking was that according to the law, there is supposed to be a hundred 100 feet of no development, etc. and the development has already taken place. Now to my knowledge, the petition has not come up for final hearing. I don't expect anything to happen, particularly although the court is supposed to go by the archaeology of that particular act. But in the meantime, an interim order was passed by the court, not for the adjoining area, but particularly about the encroachment which was there on the top of the cave itself. And that has been removed. 
but the problem is you have removed the people you have you have uh, vacated them their residences are broken but every all the debris is there now of course that debris itself is bad enough because you can't have a uh, weight on this but at least the 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 water and etc sewage which was coming down that has stopped but how long it will remain i don't know while the case is still on the asi intervened and started moving out the locals in the area offering them alternatives the first step was demolishing the most dangerous part of the settlements right on top of the structure you can still find rubble from the demolition here on the whole the pace of the clearing up has been so slow that it hasn't really helped each year more of the sculptures inside are getting damaged and the filth and stench of the gutters that spill over have become overbearing the jogeshwari caves are dug into the earth and this causes other problems this area has rancid puddles and during the monsoons it is full of water all this is doing great damage to the site Naveen Mahatre is a local boy who decided to study history after spending time around these caves. Today he conducts heritage tours for people who come here. He says his biggest lookout is how to give visitors an authentic picture of what these caves are. Jogeshwari ye aisa area hai jahan logo ke chote chote ghar hai aur bahut se bacche hai jo gumphe mein kiske liye aate hai to padhai karne ke liye aate hai. जिनका मेन हेतु क्या है कि पढ़ाई करें क्योंकि घर में जगह नहीं मिलती और लोगों का आकर्षण इसमें रहता ही है क्योंकि एक ऐतिहासिक जगह में हम बैठे हैं इसलिए थोड़े फर फर फर्क से मेरा भी ऐसा ही हुआ है कि मैं मेरा एक्चुअली जगह मेरे घर में कम है इसलिए मैं दसवीं से पढ़ने को यहाँ पे आता था तो यहाँ पर जो जूनी पुरातन मूर्तियाँ है उनका संदर्भ मुझे पता नहीं चलता था फिर भी एक क्यूरियसिटी रहती है लोगों के मन में या मेरे खुद के मन में थी इसलिए मैंने मेरा बैकग्राउंड तो था बीकॉम का बैकग्राउंड उसके बाद मैंने आर्ट आर्ट्स में के मतलब आर्ट्स में रुचि दिखाई और उसके बाद मैंने एमए किया एंशियंट इंडियन हिस्ट्री एंड कल्चर में मतलब इंडोलॉजी में और उसके बाद मैंने उसका जब डिटेल से पढ़ाई की तब ये मूर्तियों का बारीक बारीक जो नजरिया नज़रिया रहता है शैव शैव तत्व ज्ञान धर्म उसके बाद पुराणों की जो कथा है उसमें और भारतीय इतिहास में भारतीय इतिहास और संस्कृति में जो महत्व है शैव धर्म का या रॉक कट के उसका है तो इसके लिए मतलब इसके व्यू से देखेंगे भारतीय इतिहास के नज़रिए से देखेंगे तो इसका बहुत महत्व बहुत ज़्यादा है क्योंकि कोकण रीजन जो है उसमें बनाई गई शैव जो गुम्फा है वो लिमिटेड देखने को मिलते हैं जैसे कि घारापुरी मणपेश्वर और जोगेश्वरी इतनी कैसा है कि लोकल जो आ, लोकल जो लोग हैं वो यहाँ आते हैं एक श्रद्धा का भाव लेके आते हैं आपने भी देखा रहेगा कि गणेश जी की जो पुरातन प्रतिमा है उसके बाद जोगेश्वरी का मंदिर है उसके बाद शैव मंदिर है वहाँ पे लोग पूजा करने आते हैं लेकिन ऐतिहासिक महत्व उन्हें पता है लेकिन उसके साथ कुछ अलग अलग धारणाएं उनके मन में रहती हैं जैसे कि ये केव्स जो है वो पांडवों ने बनाई है ऐसा नहीं है ये केव्स ईस्वी सन छठवीं शताब्दी में कल्चुरी राजा उनके काल में निर्माण कई की गई है और उनके जो कॉइन्स है उनके ऊपर वो खुद को कहते हैं क्या कि परम माहेश्वर हम परम माहेश्वर है या और एक बात बतानी कि उनके जो शिलालेख है या ताम्रपट है उनमें उनकी पदवी आती है कि आ जन्म एवं पशुपति शर्माश्रय मतलब पशुपति को यानी पाशुपत जो शैव शैविज़म है उनको शरण आने वाला और पाशुपत शैविज़म का जो पंथ है उनको ये राजा ने कल्चुरिन ने आश्रय ही दिया था ऐसा उनके ऑल ओवर इतिहास में देखेंगे तो हमें पता चलता है तो उन्होंने बनाई हुई ये केव्स है और लोगों की अलग धारणाएं है इस केव के बारे में जैसे कि ये केव्स पांडवों ने बनाई है ओवर द इयर्स नवीन हैज आल्सो सीन अ लॉट ऑफ द स्कल्पचर्स हियर वैनिश बिकॉज़ दे हैवंट बीन मेंटेनड टुडे ही हैज टू शो हिज ग्रुप्स स्केचेस ऑफ व्हाट वंस वाज sculptures that were precursors of the more famous and still preserved elephant caves on an island beyond the southern tip of mumbai ye caves mein hame bahut se shilp hai ya bahut si murtiyan jo shiv se related 
दिखती है उनमें भी रावणा रावणानुग्रह करके एक मूर्ति है जिसमें शिव रावण पे अनुग्रह करता है ऐसी मूर्ति हमें दिखाई देती है उसके बाद नटराज शिव की मूर्ति है उसके बाद हम देखेंगे तो लकुलिश आचार्य ये आचार्य लकुलिश है जो शिव का अट्ठाईसवा अवतार जिसे माना गया है अनेकों पुराणों में तो उनकी शिल्प या उनके मूर्तियाँ हमें दिखाई देती है उसके बाद देखेंगे तो शिव और पार्वती इनकी जो विवाह की मूर्ति है जिसे जिसे कल्याण सुंदर मूर्ति कहते हैं हम मूर्ति शास्त्र के भाषा में तो वो हमें दिखाई देते हैं उसके बाद शिव और पार्वती सारी पाठ का खेल खेल रहे हैं वैसी भी एक मूर्ति है हमें जोगेश्वरी में दिखाई देती है ये मूर्तियों का दो प्रकार का महत्व है एक तो ये पौराणिक कथाएं है उसके साथ साथ जो पाशुपत शैव का जो पंथ है उसमें ये मूर्ति का या इस मूर्ति से रिलेटेड रहने वाले कुछ तत्वों का अलग से महत्व है इसलिए ये केव्स सबसे ज्यादा महत्व है वाल देर आंट मेनी टोरस हु कम टू जोगेश्वरी देर इज अ स्टडी फ्लो ऑफ पिलग्रिम्स हु कम हियर टू बाउ द हेड इन अ ट्रेडिशन दैट इज गॉन ऑन फॉर फोर्टीन हंड्रेड ईयर्स योगेश फैमिली हैव बीन प्रीस हियर फॉर जेनरेशन ही टेल्स अस अबाउट दिस केव टेम्पल ही जी गुंफा है ही अशा बयाच गुंफा है मुंबई में पं हा गुंफे महत्व मे जमीनी खा अपन जमीनी दोनते तीन मई खाली हि आई गुंफा है पूर्ण एक पाषाणा कोरले गुंफा है साढ़े तीन से मीटर सा हा पूर्ण यार्ड है और हमें हि जोगेश्वरी गुंफा कोरुन बनवे है हमें मुख्य द्वार जे है ये पूर्व और पश्चिम ये अे द्वार है पूर्व द्वारा तुम्हें जेव एंट्री कराल मजे खाली उतरना पैला गणपति स्थान ये गणपति स्थानातन तुम्हें पुढ़े आयावरती एक ओपन मंडप है पूर्ण आनतर पुढ़े आयावरती सिंहद्वार सिंहद्वारा तुम्हें आतम के शिल्प है ज्यादे राजा लकुलिश हम शिल्प है नर शिवपार्वती शिवपार्वती सारीपाट खेलता ये अशा छान कोरिकॉम है द्वारपाल द्वार रक्षक है तहुन ही आतम गेलावरती सभा मंडप है ये मंडपा टोटल अठारह पिलर्स हैं आणि या अठरा पिलरच्या मध्यभागी जोगेश्वरी मातेचं स्वयंभू स्थान आहे ही जी गुंफा आहे ही पूर्ण शिव आणि पार्वतीची आहे जोगेश्वरी माता ही एक पार्वतीचं रूप आहे पार्वतीचं रूप आहे आणि त्यानंतर पुढे गेल्यावरती महादेवाचं स्थान आहे दक्षिण द्वारापाशी हनुमंताचं स्थान आहे आणि सर्वात श्रेष्ठ म्हणजे दत्त आणि सर्वात वरती जे स्थान आहे जो एक गाभारा आहे त्या गाभाऱ्यामध्ये हे दत्ताचं स्थान आहे अशी पाच देवस्थानं या गुंफेमध्ये स्थित आहेत While youngsters like Naveen and Yogesh are nurturing the legacy of Jogeshwari Caves in their own way, they are frustrated by the pace of change or protection that this cave temple is getting. With hardly any maintenance and a flagrant disregard of regulations, the site is on the brink. The snail's pace at which the ASI is working to protect the site and restore it is getting frustrating. But you really can't blame the Central Archaeological Survey of India either. In a city where there are numerous central sites, ASI doesn't have the team or resources to manage them. The bulk of ASI's already stretched resources are involved in taking care of the UNESCO World Heritage sites in the city. Moreover, in Mumbai, land is so scarce that they are facing an uphill task. Squatters or encroachers have infiltrated even within monuments a case in point being the very significant pre portuguese mahim fort mahim is facing really a precarious problem it was with customs until 1960s and though we notified that as a protected monument the land was never handed over to the state government so unfortunately uh, the a legal call could not be taken uh, the entire fort is encroached by uh, slums and uh, now it's it's even difficult to enter the fort luckily uh, nobody has actually demolished the fortification walls but even they have constructed slums on top of that without disturbing the original contour of the fort so mahim is facing the most precarious precarious situation so far The current government is now trying to clear up the fort and restore it but again this is a very slow process 
The Archaeological Survey of India in the state and the centre are understaffed, financially strapped and unable to protect what they have. This is even more troubling given that the list of protected monuments in this country is so low. A Niti Aayog paper on heritage management that proposes a new way of looking at the larger issue of heritage in India puts the numbers in context. Currently, the central ASI manages 3,691 monuments across India. State ASI departments have around 5,000 more. But the actual number of heritage monuments and sites runs into hundreds of thousands, 450,000 according to the Niti Aayog estimates. The report's take on urban heritage is even more stark. While India has two UNESCO-listed World Heritage Cities, Ahmedabad and Jaipur, there are at least 60 cities that can fit into this tag. Each has at least 5,000 historic structures. The quantum of heritage that is off the books is staggering. While there are numerous schemes looking at urban heritage in India, for example, the 2015 Hridaya, which has identified 12 heritage cities where it's working, the problem is too large. Niti Aayog in its own report has said that Hridaya and the heritage toolkit it proposes needs to be put in place across city plans. It has called for a national database of sites with proper documentation and also a strict implementation of the 300-metre buffer zone around protected monuments. It has also iterated that the Archaeological Survey of India give a detailed list of encroachments in the sites managed by ASI, a demand that has been made numerous times. Like elsewhere, in urban heritage too, the problem is not of rules not being there, but rather of implementation. India lacks a detailed database of its heritage sites and monuments, and these need to be documented. But that too is not enough. Mumbai was one of the first cities in the country to create a detailed listing of its heritage, which allowed regulation and legal cover to its monuments. It has a heritage cell and an active citizen-led movement that has made a big difference in South Mumbai, ensuring World Heritage listings and the annual Kala Ghoda Festival to raise money for its own heritage quarter. But there is a large stretch of Mumbai beyond that is crying for attention. And the Jogeshwari Caves are just one example of how bleak things are. Ultimately, everything comes to money. If you ask me, the, the real parents would be Archaeological Survey of India. It is their duty to not only protect it, but to restore it. Question is, do they have the intention and the funds? So if some sponsors come in and give the proposal, all right, I am prepared to restore this, then maybe ASI will, ASI will be able to do it. First thing, it will have to be restored from inside. Inside, the things are deteriorating the whole uh, sandstone structures which are there. The statuary, that is all disintegrating, so that you cannot prevent it, but you can retard the process. Then better facilities should be given to the devotees. Right now I am telling you the staircase is so slippery. So the stair that particular stone staircase has to be properly done. There has to be a proper entrance. There has to be publicity that it is a monument. Just putting one board and nobody to supervise means nothing. People should feel that I am living in this area. This is a beautiful thing which is in my locality. So, I, it is one of my duties to also protect. But the problem is that the people who are staying there are not the local residents. They have become local residents because of their stay. They did not, they were not born there. So, it is a hodgepodge of so many communities coming there. So, I don't know whether they have the time or the inclination to do anything to see that this is a, this is a very uh, proud moment for us that we have something in between us. The problems Jogeshwari Caves face are similar to the problems many of our heritage sites face. A site like this cannot survive only on a prayer. It needs local awareness, institutional support and a hard resolve to protect and nurture it from across the spectrum. How else will a site like the Jogeshwari Caves, which has stood for 1400 years, be able to survive?